I've been to approximately 50 countries in the world in the past five years, and there never been anywhere where there was a good sterilization program which didn't have a lot of people uh, coming to get either male or female sterilization. I've been to a lot of places where the experts have said our men or our women don't want this operation, but they've always been proved wrong by the actual practical experience of making a high quality service available without any compulsion, well-informed people of all cultures, all backgrounds, all socioeconomic groups will choose this option in very large numbers when they have the number of children that they want. <laughs> The important words are well informed. In Bangladesh, pre sterilization interviews are commonly conducted by trained members of a responsible and respected clan, the traditional birth attendants. Their counseling must often include basic information about family health and welfare, human reproduction, the principles of contraception. Their listeners may have decided simply that they want to stop childbearing once and for all. But they are entitled to know more than the mechanics of the procedure. Full and candid counseling is not only the keystone to a successful sterilization program, but the only course of action commensurate with human dignity. In the Philippines, where private agency sterilization programs have spread deep into the countryside, counseling is simple and direct. The counselor who will be the surgeon speaks plainly. This is no time for delicacies which could produce misunderstandings. These men have asked for permanent surgical contraception. It is best that they know precisely what that means. The traditional distance between doctor and patient is something a sterilization program must bridge. In El Salvador, the surgeon speaks to his vasectomy candidates in their own idiom. It will be, he says, like having a river without fish. Only the fish will be eliminated, asks a patient. Yes, only the fish will be eliminated. The river, he promises, will go on flowing as before. These are simple men who have made an important decision. Such counseling is most effective couched in images and concepts to which the campesinos can relate. In a southern city of the United States, the counselor poses a question of the utmost gravity. We feel it's important that you understand the permanence of this decision. For instance, how would you feel if something were to happen to your wife? Well, I'd, I wouldn't have any children. I mean, that, that would, uh, if, if something did happen to her, uh, to be honest with you, I can't even imagine anything happening to her. Uh, it, uh, we may all think about that at one time or another, but uh, uh, it boggles my mind to think about it, you know, without her. In that event, uh, the whoever uh, I should meet and perhaps remarry would have just have to accept the fact that there wouldn't be any children. That's all. It is a question which belongs in every counseling session. Bangladesh is a relatively new country. It has ancient roots in conservative Islamic culture and perhaps more than its share of modern problems. One problem of massive overpopulation is being confronted squarely. Sterilization is a recent entry in the family planning program and Bangladesh is profiting by other nations experiences with the procedure. There is no compulsion towards sterilization however clear the need for immediate solutions. Bangladesh is a poor country with 40 percent of its people being landless, underemployed or unemployed. These poor people are in a grim struggle for just survival. Once they have two or three or four children, they accept family planning. Just to brighten the prospect of their survival, they and their families. Unlike in Western countries, where people accept family planning to raise their standard of living, here these 
poor people, 40% of our population, they accept family planning just for survival. I find that in Bangladesh, these poor people, where they have very little privacy, where they are away from the supply depots, servicing facilities, the vast majority of them want a simple, quick method of family planning. And that's what is sterilization, vasectomy for men and tubectomy for women. We had a couple of months ago, for nine weeks, a sterilization campaign where we did 76,828 cases of sterilization. And we found that for every case that we sterilized, we had to turn back five whom we could not serve because we didn't have the facilities, medical and otherwise. And we have found that these people who have accepted sterilization, if they avert one birth, they contribute a national service of $200. And at what cost? 10 to $12 per case of sterilization. I don't think in terms of cost benefit, there could be a better investment in Bangladesh. The private agency, which is most active in the field, offers a training program for doctors, paraprofessionals, and support staff. Most of the training is in mini laparotomy. For women who have had all the children they want or can afford and have given fully informed consent to the operation, permanent surgical contraception is clearly the most practical course. There are as yet few male candidates, but that will come, experience has shown. The logistical problems of ordinary life in Bangladesh are disheartening. There are too few sources of supply for medication too few doctors and health centers. Even primary health care remains out of reach for most people of Bangladesh. It would be difficult to find a more suitable setting for a full sterilization program. In the hills of northern Thailand are tribal people whose access to health care is more limited still. Their lives are almost unimaginably remote and sheltered behind ritual. But when they began to learn, through Thai government representatives and a missionary anthropologist, of the possibility of limiting their fertility, they accepted the whole idea as a strange and unexpected blessing. The women come to the hospital from as far as two days away, much of the journey on foot. Most of them have had little or no prior experience with modern medical care, but they have been well counseled and embark on this venture without misgivings. They live in a conservative society where the ultimate authority of the husband is rarely questioned. But they have arrived at this decision jointly, and many of the husbands cheerfully make the trip along with their wives to help care for the little ones. Most of them concede that the value of smaller families and wives released from the burden of multiple births is too great to be ignored. For women who could hardly be less accessible to contraceptive services requiring resupply or periodic examination, sterilization would seem the only feasible method. Accordingly, a Thai government hospital provides a facility for sterilizations once a month. The operations are performed by a surgical team from McCormick Hospital in Chiang Mai, headed by Dr. Aruni Fongsi, who has done as many as 75 laparoscopic sterilizations in a single visit. Advances in the technology of sterilization procedures have dramatically reduced complications and shortened recovery time. Exciting and successful as this project has been, it is only one small part of a comprehensive national program, one of the best and boldest in the world. Thailand plans to perform 150,000 sterilizations in the current year, in six regional centers, 150 first-class health centers, 
and 20 mobile sterilization teams. The tribal women usually spend one night of rest in the hospital, and the day following the operation begin the long bus ride which will take them to the foothills of their mountain homes. There they will start a climb lasting a day or more before they are back in their settlements. They are, to be sure, of hardy stock, but the speed of their recovery from surgery attests to the current state of the laparoscopic art. Another side of the world, in more than a geographic sense, is El Salvador, the smallest country in the Western Hemisphere, rich in volcanic soil, warmth, and rainfall, and all too rich in people, with one of the hemisphere's highest growth rates. Superficially, it seems an unusual setting for a thriving sterilization program. Conservative religiously and politically, with strong Spanish and Indian traditions, and a deeply rural character, it has still taken an unusually forthright attitude toward permanent surgical contraception. The farmers who till the tiny hillside plots from which El Salvador takes most of its food have the good sense, or the good luck, to be members of a union which equates the land use problem with the population problem. It has a thriving family planning program which has moved into sterilization. In this, an unusual condition for a society traditionally devoted to the principle of machismo the men have taken the lead. In concert with the demographic society, the union has an active vasectomy program. Like their brothers on other continents, the Salvadoreños recognize the economic hazards of raising a large family today. The nation's hospitals, the Ministry of Health, and a group of far-sighted doctors carry on a lively concern with developments in female sterilization. And developments there have assuredly been. for voluntary sterilizations at the maternity hospital of El Salvador has greatly increased in the past few years. In the decades 1956 to 1965, approximately 2,900 sterilizations were performed. In contrast, in the five years from 1972 to 1976, approximately 18,000 sterilizations were performed. In a review of three consecutive years in our hospital in a series of over 12,000 sterilizations, we had no, not a single death. The emphasis throughout the national campaign is on the relative simplicity and fundamental safety of the sterilization procedures. In the rural Philippines, one of the most interesting phases has been the growing tendency to regard both male and female sterilization as, under current conditions, and with the technology now available, outpatient procedures. For a long time, vasectomy has been so regarded. Now there are programs to carry laparoscopy into the same area. A mobile team from Mary Johnston Hospital in Manila travels into the outlying provinces, sets up in available quarters, and with every visit serves an increasing number of candidates for sterilization. A team member acts as counselor and makes certain that the women understand the nature of the laparoscopy, that it is irreversible, and that they have examined and in most cases employed other methods before deciding upon this one. This time the setting is an unused room in a local bank. The team has used comparable facilities in a social welfare office or a community hall. A local sponsoring agency has found the room for the mobile clinic and has brought together the patients. Evidence indicates that while a clinic is always a preferable location, it is not mandatory. Interestingly, the operating group began as a demonstration team, traveling around to show provincial doctors and clinics the laparoscopic procedure. But the demand for sterilizations became so urgent that they have moved into the delivery of services. 
After the operation, the women rest for two or three hours in companionable closeness to their neighbors on the sleeping mats which they have brought from home. Then they get up and go back to their homes, usually without any attendant complications. The growing refinement of surgical techniques for tubal ligation and the reduction of the operating area have brought about an impressive record of operations without complications. The very fact that sterilization service has been brought to the community contributes to an atmosphere of familiarity which the women of the countryside appreciate and trust. city of the southern United States on the Mississippi River. It is representative not only of the nation, but of the nation's many programs of surgical contraception. Almost as many American couples of reproductive age have chosen permanent surgical contraception as have chosen the pill. Memphis is one of 59 Planned Parenthood affiliates. Here, vasectomy is offered one night each week. Men are counseled on the first visit then asked to return after an interval of time to allow them to consider their decision fully. Well, at this point, then, it might be a good idea for me to go ahead and explain the procedure to you a little bit, and let you know it might be a good idea, the way yes. we do the procedure here. On this diagram, this is a diagram of the penis and the scrotal sac. And you can see it like an x-ray, where you see the inside of the tubes and the scrotum. OK, what we do during the vasectomy is cut the vas deferens. This is where the sperm is stored normally. Okay, during an ejaculation, you have a combination. There are recent surveys indicating that in more than a quarter of all American couples of childbearing age, either the husband or the wife has chosen sterilization. What happens during and the number is growing each year. With the sperm. What we're doing is cutting the sperm out so that your ejaculation just consists... On one thing, all programs depend. Okay, so it's not the fully informed consent of the candidate for sterilization. The nature of the operation, the fact that it is, at this point, almost certainly permanent and that all possible alternatives have been considered, all of this must be confronted and examined. The chart is universal. The message is universal. You might feel some pressure, but you won't feel any discomfort. Now, I want to know if it hurts at this point, because you should not have any pain. Does that hurt at all like that? OK, that's all the discomfort you should feel. At this point, you'll feel me touching you. But you shouldn't feel any pain. If it if I bother you at all, I want to know from this point on. Okay. Well, years ago, it wasn't so bad to have a large family, but today, the, due to the economic situation, it's, uh, well, that's an individual decision. I think everybody has to make for themselves. I, uh, I tend to agree. I had my vasectomy after two. I wouldn't take a million dollars for the two I got, though. <laughs> All right, we're just about through. You feel all right? Great. When I was pregnant, both of us, my husband and I, both decided it would uh, that something would have to be done about sterilization. It was cheaper and easier for him to have it done than it was for me because it it takes more from a woman. It takes a lot longer to get well. Where he went to work the next day and. He has a hard job, and he wasn't hurt at all. It didn't seem to affect him whatsoever. And it was, in a way, better. We lost the fear of pregnancy. We no longer have to worry about uh, having to support another one when we've already got two that's hard enough to support. Uh, like she said, I'm in the construction trade. And I've never had any problems whatsoever out of it. And, uh, my love life has uh, really gotten a lot better than it's ever been. Because my wife, like she says, is not scared anymore of becoming pregnant again. Mm -hmm. 
permanent surgical contraception may well be the contraception of the future. There is no country in today's world where surgical contraceptive services are able to meet the demand for the permanent solution. We inhabit an uncertain world where nothing is as it was or will ever be again. There is one certainty. We have a clear choice over our reproductive status. We can still say we choose to interrupt the pattern of procreation because it is of us, but only part of us. There is more to life than to make life. We can bear the children we want. We can live with those children in a world which we may perhaps make better. It is a question of choice.